good time to do it. Okay. Welcome to the Standing Jesse edition of the podcast. I forgot to buy an extra stool. So, I'm standing. It was on my list. Uh, I did look at the Walmart that I always go to, and they only had brown ones, and I figured I'd at least try to get a matching one. I like the beige color. That's why I bought them the first time. You think you'll be able to buy one that matches? Yeah. Uh, okay. How much do you want to pay for them? I have two. I the want them new. Backs are a little different. I think mine's a little rounder. I have two. Yeah, I'm, I'll wait and see. It's, I'm impressed by them because I thought, ah, these are just going to be uh, cheap, cheap stools. But I've sat on them quite a bit. I've done some writing on this counter. Um, yeah, I got mine at Walmart, too. Yeah. They're almost a dad. Yeah, they're good they're stools. Does it really make Scribble, sense to be writing on the counter when you have a desktop computer, like, just back there? Sometimes. I very, very rarely write, you know longhand is that the terminology yes. at this point yes. longhand but sometimes i still do and yes it does make sense because my and desktop that would actually not be a proper it would be too low with the height of the stool this is a bar height stool you need a counter height stool they're two different things sorry i also sell furniture really well, what furniture do you sell and here we go and for what <laughs> for where i work at bd's okay so you and also sell, work at BD's. so that's yeah. how jesse knows you okay yeah. So, we have Okay, I did guest. know her before I worked at BD's. Okay. Through BD's. Through BD's. So, we but should discuss that. Yeah. So, we have a guest on... What's our guest name? Teresa Jacobs, right? Okay. Teresa... I forget your middle name already. I don't use Jacobs. So, you knew her before BD's. How's that? I met her one day as I was getting stuff printed, and I didn't know she worked for BD's, but she was getting a children's book printed. Yes. At, and I somehow got a copy of said children's book. He was just standing there and there he, was something wrong with the printer. It wasn't working right. And I was just like, here, you want this book? And I just gave him like this messed up children's book. And I didn't even know who he was. And I just said, when I'm famous, that really, book is going to be worth money. That's a really interesting way of establishing a long-term <laughs> connection. Very random. People just seem to give you stuff a lot at BDs. Because some people come in with like their music or... or weird things and you're like here like you should listen to this and then they come back and ask you oh, for money for it the st Catharines white rapper no no there no, was, was a lady there was, a, there was another lady who came in uh asked for something to be printed and she's a singer and she's it was around christmas time and she said oh i'm i have a christmas album that is launching so i guess it was a little bit before christmas time because it'd be really bad to release a christmas album right at christmas yeah, it wouldn't have much um, time. Be even worse in the summer. Yeah. So I said, oh, that sounds interesting. I got her information. By the next time I got there, there was a CD waiting for me with a, with a note saying, I'll come back later for the money. <laughs> for the money? Yeah. <laughs> See, I didn't charge him. That's the difference. So yeah. eventually I paid for the CD. She extorted you. A little bit. Yeah, I'd yeah. just be like, dude, I don't want this. No. Yeah, well, but... I shouldn't call her a dude, but... Whatever. I I don't mind the CD. It hasn't had much good... I haven't listened to it in a few months for some reason. Oh, yeah, you're a Christmas person. I am That's a Christmas right. person. My... I Well, I haven't listened I, to it since Christmas. I feel like you have a plethora of Christmas CDs and, and Christmas songs on your phone anyways, so... Not on my phone. On my iPod, sure. On your iPod? But, uh... Do you, you don't listen to music off of your phone? No. No. Yeah. When I got my first iPhone, uh, I had already had an iPod Touch like for quite a bit, and it just seemed natural to have a higher gig to dedicated music device and then just have my phone for smaller for, I don't know. Is your phone full of stuff then? My phone room? is mostly filled with applications. Oh, okay, well, that's fair. It's work applications. I don't have anything fun on my phone. Unless you call Instagram fun. Instagram's pretty fun. Or Facebook. Hmm. But no games, no nothing. Just banks, Google Maps. Okay, Snapchat. I have Snapchat on my phone. Banks. I have banks on my Bank. phone. Banks. They all have a separate app. That's kind of a... It'd be nice if there was just one you could log in and just pick your branch or something. That'd be neat. A bit more cohesive. Yeah. Um, so no, I met you, and then I started working there, and then I was like, hey, she's a writer, which I knew beforehand, and I write, not as much as you do, at least not to the and publishing extent. Yes. Yeah, so, good job. 
<laughs> so I, I do see, and what stood out to me, and the only thing I've really heard about is the children's books, but what kind of stuff do you write? So my favorite is horror. Okay. So I began, well, I had a couple children's books from when my son was a baby. Are these from when he was a baby? Those are from, yes. I actually wrote them when he was a baby. One called Puddle Jumping. One's Puddle Jumping. And the other one is The Lonely Leaf. Which is the one that I got for free. Got for free. So that one, it was actually a really good friend of mine, Jennifer. Well, we both yeah. worked at a used bookstore together, and she did all the artwork for me for free on that one. Because it was like 20 years ago. I mm-hmm. mean, my kid's like 24 now. Um, and it never went anywhere. And then when I decided in 2015 to get into the publishing world on my own, um, I just printed those ones off and put them on Amazon. Did you Were you printing them off in 2015? I think it was 20. So that's a long time ago when I met you, because I didn't really even start coming well, it's into. Well, twenty eighteen. So. Well, we have a different scale of with, with time. the amount of things that change in my life. Twenty fifteen is a long yeah. time ago. I have ago. done all of this in two years. That's disgusting. Yeah. Yeah. 20... Self self publishing though. There's lots of questions. Well, it was December twenty fifteen, so it might have been. Okay. Might have been beginning of twenty sixteen. Yeah, but still, I didn't get the job at Beatty's till April twenty seventeen. So. Yeah. So a year. Yeah. No, neat. And then the fun thing about puddle jumping, not even exactly the story, it's just like a, I don't know, two to five year old kind of story, is the artist, because I just went online and I'm like, I need an artist, I don't have a bazillion dollars. He lives in the town in Russia where that meteor landed. Do you remember the great big I do remember there? watching all the dash cam yeah. footage of the meteor. Yeah, that one. He yeah. actually lives in that town in <laughs> Russia. So I was dealing with this Russian guy. Um, who doesn't grasp the English language 100%. But it, I mean, it was so much fun just connecting with him, and now we're friends, and he's going to do my next book for me. Next kid's book or next, next book? next kid's book. What is your next kid's book? Um, my next kid's book is... Spoiler alert, I guess. I don't know. Uh, don't That's know. self-promotion. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I'm just, he's uh, on vacation right now, so he's not going to start till probably September to start looking at the book to do the artwork. You don't have a title picked out or anything yet? For that one there, I... I do have a title, but I'm not 100 percent sure. Yet, okay, so I'm so not going to say it. it. Fair enough. But it is about a little boy who, um, who has a dream, and like this this little sleep girl, like Sandy, instead of the Sandman, it's Sandy, a little girl. Okay. And hmm. she comes into his dreams, and I'm I'm not going to give you any spoilers because I'll be posting all that when it comes up. Cool. Yeah. Where can people go to check that stuff out? Amazon. Amazon. Mm-hmm. Links down below. Perfect. So yeah. maybe it'll be out yeah. by the time anybody sees this. <laughs> I don't know. So self-publishing. What made you decide to go the self-publishing route? Well, have you ever sent anything to an agent? Yes, and I've got a few go to hell, uh, go to hell letters. So. If you're lucky, you get a rejection letter. Yeah. If you're lucky. Yeah. Because you can wait a year and get nothing. I've been... So it's just really time-consuming. True. Who, who, I just wrote all this in like two years. Why would I sit around waiting a year for an answer? So I did it myself. That's fair. I mean, the only thing that I ever actually had a public, anything that I've written published in would be a collection of short stories by Stuart McLean, the Vinyl Cafe CBC guy. But in a magazine? In an in a actual book book. Oh, yeah? Yeah, and, and then he died. Your book? Hmm? Didn't you get a copy? No. Hmm. Because the, the story that I wrote for the book, mm-hmm. uh, the book was published in like... 2014 2015 and i submitted the story back in 2007 so i didn't really have yeah, close see. connection with him no it was just kind of an off it's a collection of short stories because he used to do this amalgamation of of stories from his listeners and one time it was a story about traveling and i had a funny traveling story and it was just neat to a hear the story on the radio but also hear him pronounce my name right so you actually nice. got it on the radio yeah oh that's cool yeah, that's, that's exciting right that's interesting i've always found it kind of it's kind of cool that you do write books just as far as fiction goes because i've never had an interest in writing fiction i do read a little bit of it and i mean to set the tone the only thing that i've written that's like kind of publish ish is is when i was at the university i did a thesis project and it goes through like a internal publication process i mean you could right, yes. look it up yeah. online and find it but but that's and i mean it is a really carefully crafted document but it's not like a book 
But that's where we differ. I wouldn't be able to do what you just did. No, I, would I. I can't even do what I did back then. <laughs> like two years later. Well, yeah, it's been it's been long enough now that I have forgotten most of how I did that. And I've got a lot of help by somebody that you know was a has been a professor for more more time than I've been alive. Anyways, so so they had quite a talent for helping me do what I did. But, but yeah, the, that's one good thing about being in school, like yourself with the script writing and that, right? You have people there that do it and know what to do and help you and when you're doing this you're kind of on your own you're relying on people online i haven't actually hit a lot of the online thing i still try to keep in touch with the people i'm in school with but i found that the schooling that i went to like for writing in general when i was in high school there was this really old school english teacher Mm -hmm. like i think it was my grade 10 english teacher it was her last year. I don't know. She doesn't give a damn about anything anymore. But I was talking to my grade nine English teacher, and I gave her a copy of one of the books that you actually read through. So it's been in the works for a long time. And she liked it. She said, there's obviously some issues, but can I pass it along to the other to the other English teachers? I'm like, sure, whatever. And everyone gave positive feedback again saying you know there's this issue yada 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 and there's still issues in it even 10 years later didn't get anything from this uh this english teacher until i was in her class and one day i finished work and i pulled out because i wrote that book all longhand which i don't recommend no just hundreds upon hundreds of pages maybe not back then but i mean originally that's how i used to have i know you didn't have it any other way so I started writing it in class, and she's like, "Oh, I, you're the you wrote the thing in Red Lash." I'm like, "Yeah." And she's like, "It wasn't very good. You should probably <laughs> not continue it." Oh God, wow. And I'm like, "What? That's awesome." And I'm like, "Ugh." So that was odd. But then the next year, teacher, he's like, "That's that's pointless." Yeah, it, nowadays there's people that write stories, and it's it's translated into movies. Nowadays, people have you can write complete narratives that just look like a text conversation. And there are books that have been published mm-hmm. that tell the story just through text. And then there's movies that tell stories through Skype chats, horror but, films. But it's a thing that no, you know, traditional writer or whatever would have conceived of long ago. And now you have people that are creative enough to try it and it catches, you know, some kind yeah. of cultural well, especially response. Especially with the youth because, yeah. you know, that's how they see the world. Mm-hmm. So it relates, right? Not that my book had anything to do with texting, but no, at the but very least, it, it, it's nice to have some sort of... I do have that in Sudden Death. <laughs> sudden Death. Sudden Which day. is consequently... Hmm. Uh, death. Oh my, is it a There's book? There's an app for that. Okay. There is an app. This sounds like a movie that I know is being written. We made an app for it, so you can actually go online and get the Death Game app Okay. and play the game. Is it a good app? I mean, and we're they, speaking candidly here. They are doing um, an indie film. Before. Is it an iPhone app as well? Or just Android? No, it should be iPhone. Should be iPhone? What's it called? Death Game. Death Game. Okay. Which, Keep talking. If you go onto my Facebook or my website or any of that, I have links. So you can get it quickly. Well, we'll see how quick it is on yeah, the app. Unfortunately, how... it's so stupid. My phone... It's a 4.4, 4, so I can't get it. Are you sure it's Death Game? 4.4. 4. Yeah. You have an iPhone? No, it's a, an Android. Android 4.4. 4. Oh, okay. I'm like... That's I, I think lollipop, too, isn't it? I'm too out of date, I think. Yeah. Yeah. So I can't get it. Yeah. I, it, some of the some of the brands for the Androids are better at, at letting you update to the newest software for, for longer, but but yeah, that's a it's got to be... A, fairly old phone by yeah. now it's at least like yeah, have you I, three years ago played the game that's based on uh, no, i haven't been able to because i couldn't get it so i'm like okay by like december i'm gonna get a new phone can't it's even just, play your own game right now i got so much going on that i don't care about my phone do you care do you care about the game though i care, about the, I care game. about the game i want to play the game it's based on my book that's pretty awesome how who developed the app so i have a very good friend her name is lisa crawford uh, it's a it's a google play store yeah, you should still be able to get it in the other one too, right? Not on my Apple Eye. Uh oh. Not on my. Oh well. It's it's more rigid to like the terms to publish things on the App Store for for iPhone. So a lot of apps just tend to come out. Is on, there murder on in Android. this game? 
Um, no, the, from what I saw is that the demon, his name is Bermore. He's the demon of technology. He can come through phones, telephones, your microwave, your TV. Cameras? I created this demon because I want... like when <laughs> She created the I demon. Because <laughs> when, you know, Dracula was invented or werewolves or, you know, all of that, it didn't exist, right? Somebody started it. Oh, yeah. And hundreds of years later, people are still writing about it. Mm-hmm. So that was my intention with making this demon. To he make has... a folklore ubiquitous... Yeah. Kind of like the Slender Man thing that came out of yeah. nowhere. That's yeah, that's, a bit more I think modern. that's one of the modern examples of something that really caught some kind of cultural response. Yeah. So I think since everybody has technology, the idea of technology being a horrific element is very possible. Well, Stephen King did what? The cell phone? Yeah. I could almost feel like the... Like a Japanese storytelling, like something... I, I don't know. There's, I feel like there's some kind of anime that's probably about that topic, probably. like a demon coming out of technology and just the yeah. symbolism behind it, because I tend to be pretty good with that kind when of When you're writing, do you write with, it sounds weird to ask it like this, do you write with no research, or do you come up with an idea and then make sure that you're not just barking up somebody else's tree? Um, I start with no research, and then I research as I go. Okay. Because I did look up, I could not find a demon of technology on the internet. Okay. I made his own website and everything. I did all of that. Um, Is it dot wixsite dot com? Of course. She, she and I have a domain name debate. Yes. He laughs at me because I can't afford to pay for. I don't website. laugh if, at her. If you're, he laughs at me. if you're good at what you do, you can make a Wix site work. But you yeah, have but to be the, good at what no, you no, do. No, no, no. There's nothing wrong with the actual Wix site. Yeah. I had a Wix site. It's the domain that I don't like. Right. I like your website. I just don't like the domain. Because it's free, so. Yeah. That's it's it. There. It's I a good mean, enough right reason. Right now, it's, you know, it's on everything. It's on all of my, it's in all my books, on all my links. It's on my, drop your phone there. I created it's this. It's on her bag. This cute little bag Ooh. that when someone buys one of my books, they get a free tote bag. You can print those at Beatty's? Yeah. Huh. It says, Be Your Own Hero, and it's got my webpage. And then on this side is a poem that I wrote. Do you send that with, with everybody or just people that buy it in person? You can't send a tote bag over Amazon, can you? No. But if someone, like, some people actually contact me and they want to buy a signed book, so then I'll... Do you charge extra for the signature? No. No, but I have to pay shipping, so they'll have to pay for the shipping. So I'll get the book brought to me, and I'll sign it, and I'll put it in the bag, and I'll give them oh, the that bookmark. that one's already signed. I have a bookmark. Oh. This is that one. Never mind. And that, I don't again, need any has signatures. So... Is that cow... I'll send it to them. Is that cat one the one that Tila did? Yeah. Okay, she did a promotional Cat, bit yeah. for that. Yeah, okay. Cataclysm. I remember, so, and that was at a Chapters, right? Yeah, I did okay. this one at Chapters. This was actually my very first book that I self-published. Okay. It took me 25 years to write. So it's a lot of time. I was like you, where I just, I mean, I would go in, I'd write a chapter, I'd walk away for three years, right? Yeah, that's the way that it's that's, worked for yeah. me. So what is your experience? Are you Are you still in contact with chapters is there an nda can we talk <laughs> i actually took all my books on chapters um because i was a little bit upset with them because if you go into chapters try and find an indie book well try and find a local writer's book do they hide them they do probably because with respect they probably don't sell I as sold, much they when i took my books out she told me that i had the best signing of any of course that was there so that was pretty awesome and then I, I left them 10 books and I sold seven. So how is that not good sales? That's good sales. Well, I guess percentage-wise, yeah, they cleared most of the inventory. Yeah, but you have hmm. to go like into the main doors and then turn left and then turn left and then turn a sharp left. It's like this little tiny shelf that no one can find, not even the employee. And it's all just independent writers in one place? Yeah. It, they should, you'd think that they'd be inter- interspersed with the they other books. They should be as soon as you walk in the front door. At the very local least, artists. it should be local if, if you're going to do local, maybe put that at the front. But because I think if you're in, like, if you're self-publishing, I think it should just be interspersed with everything else for the yeah. most part. Well, wherever. that's what I did. I took my book and I stuck it. Because <laughs> it, alphabetically, because it's horror, I'm between Joe Hill and Stephen King. <laughs> and I mean, you have the code for them to, you know, sell your book anyways, so. Yeah. So I stuck it there and took some pictures. Well, it's kind of funny. Whatever her name is, Tila. Tila took pictures for me. Yeah. So, yeah, did so you that was really cool. did you sign the ones that were going in chapters? I know J.K. Rowling when she first published, she was 
she was so excited to go see her books on her shelf and she was always saying i've always wanted to sign one but a lot she of times a lot of times i didn't have id so i didn't want to sign and then oh. not be able to prove who i was oh that'd, that'd be the like first funny books trick. the first one like when they were yeah just on the shelf before she became yeah, one of the best like, note off i mean i did a book signing and i'm nobody like you can get a book signing right? i don't know if that's a it was that as popular of a thing back in like the 1990s to just set up shop in a bookstore and do that sure it was yeah, yeah. I, mean, I, I I don't know what the story is behind that. I know that they published her book, but I'm not sure they thought it was going to be as well. That's it was, but that's every book, right? Well, yeah, you, you can't you, predict the success. She got, but you, you would yeah. you would do a book signing for I mean some, a, a independent artist who has you know a good product, but if you're going to do a book signing for somebody who has signed with your your um, publishing company if you're if you're going to choose to do a book signing with Stephen King or some unknown author who are you going to choose probably Stephen King Stephen yeah. King mm-hmm. not comparing J.K. Rowling to Stephen King but that's probably why oh. she didn't do a book okay, signing but you want to yeah. hear a funny story not really yes. funny nobody's going to laugh but uh, it is a funny thing happened 15 years ago my father and I went to St. Catherine's Library for a writing course and um, the guy Brian I'm sorry I can't remember his last name at the moment because I'm getting old Brian that happens. Are you still friends with him? Uh, no, he is actually a teacher at Ryerson. Okay. He has his own company where he uh, consults and edits and does all that for writers. And he actually, I just sent him my new book, which costs money. But if he likes you, he will get you published. And when we first met him 15 years ago, he brought in Kelly Armstrong. Okay. You know who she yep. is? You're not so much of a reader, so maybe you don't. Hmm. You read, I think you might you listen to audiobooks so you might actually i read in bursts i would say like i i can probably get through maybe 15 books a year but they're all usually within the span of like two months oh yeah so i don't know but it's one of those things where yeah i definitely i think kind she enjoy. originally started with like werewolves yeah that kind of thing the name almost sounds familiar but i yeah. i wouldn't be able to put my finger on it so she's lo- i want to say local but she's from somewhere up north and he had her at this show with him not even a show it was like a course we were there to learn to write and you were shell shocked no she was there she was nobody oh he had just brought her in because he's like she sent me her book and i liked it so much that i'm sending it to a publisher and now she's like i was gonna swear she's famous wow so you can swear if you want i know i'm just trying not to because i swear way too much no it's good Um, said this is a podcast rated for general audiences for once yeah I mean, we have talked about children's books, so yeah. we can keep yeah, it PG. I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm trying to be good. But, so anyway, <laughs> so I just sent him my new book, which um, actually my father started writing at that writing course, and he had about 30 pages, and he just, um, it wasn't going out for him. He wasn't, didn't know how to work it out, wasn't going well, and he had it for 15 years sitting in a file. And then when I started publishing, he's like, uh, could you write this for me? And I said, yeah. Hmm. So I wrote a book for my father. So it's concepted by him. It's his idea. But I took like what he was going to do totally different. I like, I'm like, okay, but I have to make it my own because I can't write what you're thinking because I don't know what you're thinking. And uh, it was just freaking amazing. I absolutely love it. And he loved it because I was doing it in Google Documents, uh, Google Drive. So you can see the updates. He was reading yeah. while I was typing. Like, literally, I'm typing. I'm like, I text him, are you watching me type? And he's yeah. like, can you tell? I said, yeah, because there's like it a, says two a symbol users. up at the top. Yeah. Hmm. And he was probably like, come on, he's like, oh, write more. <laughs> yeah, write write more. Can you write faster? I'm like, Jesus, I'm put, don't leave it a cliffhanger. No! So I sent this book to Brian, and I'm really hoping that it would be kind of cool, you know, if he's like, hey, this is good enough that, you know, I want to recommend you. He might not make it that far, but uh, he's definitely going to tell me what, wrong with it it has problems and it's just kind of cool that it's for my dad and it's like this huge connection it's weird how much does it cost to do um or does it vary book to book genre to genre no it's um like three cents a word something like that it's not bad i mean it depends how many words depends on the book that's a very strange i have no concept of what that scale would look like well let me three cents a word how many words would be in a book say fifty thousand words Fifty thousand words. Okay, right. but that's in context. Okay. I don't know. 
how many words are in Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire? If Siri answers that without a web page coming up, I'll be kind of... I was just going... That's going to be like 100,000 words or something. Goblet of Fire is a pretty long... Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire, 190, 637,000 words. Okay. At three cents. We'll just round it down to 190,000. That's still a considerable... Yeah, because I think this one... 6,000 bucks? Yeah. This one is like... um, 50,000 words. I just got my hmm. 6,000 bucks. Sometimes the weird physics side of me kicks in because I, I did study a little bit of physics in school. I wonder how much ink that is, like in weight, <laughs> right? Because the printer's reeling off all these things, and you could probably just pres- like ascribe a difference in weight between the page, like the page book without text in it, and afterwards. It'd be kind of funny to establish. <laughs> That'd sell, be interesting. Sell books by the. You're the gonna have to get wing. yourself a good scale to do that. Yeah, well, I, but I, that's why you do it theoretically. You could just figure out how much a f- container of ink is, or whatever, and how many of them you go through. And there's a way to work around. I'm sure. I am terrible at math, so. That's why she writes. That's right. I sometimes just do equations because I'm bored. They like just simply. It's always the physics stuff that I enjoy because it's like hypothetically, if I built a bridge from here to here and I had it on a certain slant or whatever, and just figure out like the. An- the angles involved in weird stuff actually there's more more applicable stuff than that because we do some drone photography and it's kind of nice you can tell, determine the angle of view of, like looking straight down of like how much surface area can you cover I, right. like i took a picture at this height how much lo- a, like area am i looking at or, or things like that but that's yeah. i would be terrible at that because that was actually one of my worries with my dad's book is one of the characters is a mathematician and you needed it to be able to and describe that. Yeah, I needed to do that. I, but, I mean, I just kept it very general that, like, she would use um, her math to figure out trajectories from this distance to that distance. And, um, you know, how far the bullet's going to fly, things like that. Mm-hmm. I mean, yeah, you probably have to outsource a lot of that stuff if you if you could find an expert, expert to help you. But when you were in school, was it, did you really lean heavily towards, like, English and literature and things like that at the time? Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, it's something I've wanted to do since I was a child. And it was mostly those subjects you like. You didn't really have anything else you you leaned towards at the time. Yeah, no. I've always just wanted to write, hmm. and I mean, I read anything I could get my hands on. My first Stephen King book, I was twelve. Really? Yeah, because hmm. I needed bigger books. Like the books for twelve-year-olds just weren't enough. No. Yeah, I, I guess it, some of the because I, I did enjoy a little bit. I think horror was probably the first thing that I got into, but when I was a kid, it was the Goosebump books that were yeah. really taking Goosebumps off. That's a good entry into like children's horror. Right? But I, I did yeah. find them a little underwhelming, too, when I was reading, probably around that age-ish. Yeah, because those are very geared to young, I would they say. Are, and, like and, eight, nine, maybe ten. And I didn't even know anything about Stephen King until I was probably yeah. like 16 or 17 yeah. years old, so I didn't touch those. Yeah, I mean, I was just hungry, right? Like, mm-hmm. give me something, give me more. So I would just go to the library and read whatever. I, Going back to Harry Potter, I think that was probably the book that got me into reading just larger format books with these really complex and interesting stories, that, you know, and then comes becomes part of a series at that point. But Yeah, she was Harry. so good at, like, inventing mm-hmm. just amazing things that no one's ever heard of before. That was really cool. Sort of get lost yeah. in the Harry Potter universe. Yeah. It's this weird... Yeah, she did a really great job of that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I wouldn't be able to invent a sport. That's always the thing that's really interesting to me. Uh, just to... Because there's the... In books, you still have to do... You still have to somewhat follow the whole idea that you don't want a ton of exposition. So you have to establish it as as simply and realistically as possible and even in a conversation plus it worked out very well that harry potter was being introduced to everything so you could be introduced to everything as well yes it's convenient that's this really interesting especially it's especially well executed in a lot of video games but just like the lore and and the things involved if you have like this one intellectual property where like say you write a book and in the book the character is watching tv now you have to write something about this character you know what they saw on tv and you have to like script a tv show almost and it's this weird thing that video games even have i know you played the grand theft auto games if you just sit down and listen to like the radio stations or stuff like that in the game like there's so much intricacy and so much in the world that you can get involved with in books it's 
it's a bit more linear than that, but you can still feel the world that people exist in. I think um, a good example of a writer that can do, do that quite well, I think of George Orwell's ni- 1984, that you can really get a feel for like what the technology was like and, and all these things around him and sort of building up the the world, like, hmm, I don't know, just the media that they consume and all that. There's like so much layers to it. Yeah. That's cool. Michael Crichton did a really good job of that too, like a good sci-fi writer. I'm not a giant sci-fi person, but... I would say a lot of the science fiction people do that. Well, Game of Thrones, what's his name? George R. R. Martin. Like, that's holy crap, right? Like, have you read them or watched the thing, the show? I. That's one of the one of the few things that's really popular right now that I've just entirely stayed away from because I, I do tend to be a completionist, so if I don't think I have time to finish all the books, like, right soon, I won't start them, and I haven't started them yet. I've actually... I think I down, downloaded one of the audiobooks onto my Audible yeah, or something, it's a, it's a lot. or wherever it was. A lot of people, a lot of locations. Yeah. I just don't know how he keeps track of all that. And that's why he takes so long to write. Yeah. Yeah. For yeah. me, I don't have time to read the books. One day I might. As for I the, haven't even read those ones yet. As for the TV show, everybody always says, oh, you should watch the TV show. And I did. I watched the first season. And I'm like, you know what? It's pretty good. I like it. But. I also pay way too much attention to the behind the scenes, and I know that they have issues. I'm like, I'm going to put a pause, because last time I invested a ton of time into a TV show, Lost, they screwed me. <laughs> the, because the ending of it. The ending. Good. It's like, yeah. it wasn't okay, worth yeah, it. Lost is different, because Lost was written for TV. Yeah. Game of Thrones is an actual... Doesn't mean they still can't drop the ball. No, but I mean... No, you gotta and watch it. Isn't a lot of the Game of Thrones stuff written for tv because they didn't have books to go off of yet well now they're in totally new territory yes no well the, it is if you read the books it is because the book there's so much in the book that they can't put it all into the tv show yeah but so they, they kind of chop it up okay but it's not dis, it's not like lost it's not disappointing well, I, I, I know that but they the first seasons were based on the books but right now they're going off into kind of new territory because they don't know what's going to happen next and they can't just stand and wait Mm -hmm. there's too much money riding on yeah six years or something the the tv show so they're doing their own thing and then once that happens not that i don't trust hbo or anything like that but i'm just gonna i'm just gonna wait wait till it's finished and then if people are like oh it's awesome then sure i people say it's not the destination it's the journey yeah i would beg to differ i don't Wow, the TV show is different. I don't really care that much about the way TV shows are. Like, I never, I've never really been that upset about some, the way some things ended. We talked about Breaking Bad a couple times, and that was one of the shows that I did follow as it was oh, coming out and being show. released. And it, Do you watch Better Call Saul? Yes. I got, I got to get into are that. But watching I, it currently? Yes. Me too. Season four, episode two. Yeah. Well, episode three tomorrow. Tomorrow, okay. I don't, I don't even know what day it is. They're getting so close. So meeting up yeah, with the timeline, that's yeah. That's what I'm wondering. Like, what's going to happen? How is that going to transition? I think what they're going to, again, behind the scenes stuff, I think if they they want to go artistic, Breaking Bad had 62 episodes. They were going to try to end Better Call Saul after 62 episodes. I thought eventually they were going to end Better Call Saul with Walter White coming into Saul's office for the first time. Mm-hmm. But they're getting too close for that. Do you think they can still stretch it out before they get there? There's a spo- he doesn't even have his shot. Oh, I know. Yet. But spoiler alert: uh, in the every every new season, Better Call Saul opens with a stinger where you actually get to see Saul post Breaking Bad, working as a Cinnabon owner in Omaha, like he said. Yeah. And normally his life's pretty boring, but at the end of the last season, it appeared as though he had a heart attack or something, and you actually see the follow-up to that where he didn't have a heart attack but he's at the hospital and he has to give his uh yeah he gave his driver's license gave his driver's license and he's feeling nervous because he's lying he gets into a cab the cab driver's staring at him and Saul's looking around and the guy has a uh, new mexico uh um thing on on his uh rearview mirror so Saul starts to panic, and it's the first he's time ever. Probably seen the billboards and whatever yeah, advertisements. It's the first time ever where you thought this is after the end of Breaking Bad, but what if it's not? It's after Saul leaves. What if Walter White's still alive, 
in that because if Walter White's still alive, everybody is still wanted. And if everybody's still wanted, so is Saul. So there's a possibility that it could really well, With be... the span of episodes that they do want to put out, you'd think it, it would go long past the end of... Well, they're already Breaking on Bad. season four, yeah. which means that by the end of this one, they'll be at 40 episodes. Yeah, that's still quite a long time that's to still, fill. Well, yeah, we still have... So you get a bit of a, like a prequel and a... You get a prequel sequel. and a sequel, so it's a very neat way of doing things. And this, the prequel part is riveting. It's one of the only prequels where I actually feel nervous because they introduce characters logically to actually give some weight because you know Saul's not going to die. No. You know Mike's not going to die. Until he does, but... Yeah, and you know... <laughs> Until he does. <laughs> and Tuco's in the show a little bit. You know Tuco's not going to die. Until he does, yeah. yeah. And You know then, how he dies, yeah. And then villains... Uh, you you know what happens to Gus Fring, but doesn't make him a any less terrifying here because it's before his his demise. Yeah, I like I like watching them now, like Salamanca before he has his stroke and all that. Like it's really cool. Hmm. Like it, they did an excellent job. Of so that show. it it'll be interesting once it's all said and done to watch hmm. Better Call Saul, and then you're spilling. Did you spill on your book? I spilled on my book. Uh, and then watch it into Breaking Bad. The only flaw, and we talked about this yesterday, actually, is the girl that plays Mike's granddaughter in Better Call Saul is so much older. That's what I said. I don't than, know. Is, like, why it, is she so old? Wasn't she a little girl? Yeah, in, in Breaking but that Bad? is purely because... Is the same little... The same no, actress? No, not the same actress. It's really? just because she's an older actress, they can shoot with her for longer. Any any TV show that has yeah, a little kid know, has issues. issues. Yeah. So she ha- she doesn't have as much to do with the plot in this. Not that she had a ton to do in the plot. So kind of an emotional checkup. Yeah, that's for... really the whole part of either one of them that I don't like. Is that family with Mike. It's like, okay, these people are boring. Make them go away. Yeah. But you see why he's doing what he's doing. But we already it, knew that. Yeah. I, I, I don't really remember too much about it, but it did, I do feel like it was some kind of emotional balance for Mike and just like a reality check for him to have this little yeah, girl. Yeah, it kind of kept him grounded, I guess, yeah. from not like going off and just being a crazy-ass killer or whatever. An old James Bond. Mm-hmm. No, it, it's a very neat show. It is very it's riveting. It starts slow. It's a very slow burn. So you haven't started Better Call Saul? No, no. but I will as soon as I can commit enough time to do that. Probably. And Ozark. Yeah. So many shows. The, what the the other one? It's about people got like a chip at the back of their neck or something, and they're if they, they their shell can die and they they, and they can be regenerated into something else. Whatever. I, my roommate showed me another show on Netflix. Oh, I, I, I'm sure somebody can tell us what it is if anybody knows what it is. But no, it's, there's way too much to watch out there, and we're not helping. I, I think it is a Netflix exclusive, but it's okay. A, so that's good. A pretty good one. But there's. There's Way too much to watch out there, yeah. including our stuff. Yeah. We have over 30 hours of content. Well, and that's what I'm saying, like, with the, the podcast. It's like, who's got that kind of time? Because I need to go home from work and write for three or four hours and then maybe watch one episode of a show I'm watching and go to bed. It, it takes a different... I, I At this point in my life, I don't really have time either. I wouldn't, I wouldn't devote so much time to a podcast. It's always been a thing that I could put on casually. Like, if I went to the gym, listen to a podcast or something like that. I don't really go to the gym anymore, so that doesn't help. I just go to work. and But but when I was a university student, I had lots of time. I listened to lots of podcasts. I would be able to do that while working. Just because, I don't know, I guess university work isn't that mind. <laughs> eh, it, it doesn't take up all of your attention looking back. Yeah. And when I was doing baby photos, I would listen while I was driving. Yeah. So now that I'm not driving as much, I'm not listening as much. Uh, when I'm editing photos, I can listen. When I'm editing video, I can't. But I'm I'm looking forward to having weddings to edit anyways, because we're... I I have a wedding to edit now, but but we're going to start really hitting a lot of uh, wedding photography season. some hard deadlines, so... No, but I'm going to hopefully end up being driving a little bit more, so I'll be able to boost my audiobook and podcast. It's almost... Well, I, book clubs still exist. It almost like have you ever been a member of something where you just have to read a book every week or whatever for the entire year, or, or did some kind of challenge? Sounds like, like you should be a part of a club that you have to write a book every week. Yeah, That'd be, should be yeah. Wow. Well, uh, I actually just joined um, a site because they'll promote your work 
if you agree to read it's like three books in six months or something I'm like well oh, that's easy I can do that standing in my head I can read a book in an hour hmm. or two hours or however long you it get is. headaches too easily to stand on your head and read I a book read a hundred pages an hour so however long the book is that's how many hours I can read it in hmm. so yeah so I joined that so there's that one but other than that I don't because I better read for a lot of people which is you know someone like Jesse just wrote something and they're like can you read and give me some feedback I do that for a lot of people because a lot of people do that for me so yeah it's almost like the community that I, I've seen inside like in the universities where it's just all this peer-reviewed literature where all the professors yeah. they're sort of obligated to read each other's stuff whether they want to or not and then they get their stuff read which is nice but but yeah I guess it's a little yeah, it's nice that the author's community at least is, is it mostly just local authors or you read stuff from no, people it's worldwide worldwide yeah. yeah that's the great thing about the internet these days because before you were just in the dark and you had no resources for anything right now you just go online and you get on facebook and you join groups and you chat to people hmm. like i said i read their books they read my books i found editors i found artists it's just you just do everything cover the covers yeah that's a pretty neat looking cover yeah I really so all these different covers are mostly different artists at this point because um, you just got the one guy that does your children's one. books but there was one when we were talking about world building that I wanted to bring up but I can't remember what book it was but you actually also had an artist do a map of the town is it for oh yeah okay there's a map of the town in Cataclysm which is a friend of mine who did that Let me find it here not going to see it very well on the. Do you have it? Did I can put it we up can on the screen it. now? Bear Lake. That's an interesting rendition. It's it's more of an artsy looking thing than it is like an yeah. actual. But it's really just geographical location. I did make up the town, and like something will happen downtown, and something will happen at the lake. So this way, I had drawn drone. I'm a writer. I, can I have a drone. <laughs> I had drawn it when I was writing, so that I would make sure I was sending the people in the right direction. Mm-hmm. So then I was like, well, why not include it? And then people are like, oh, where's, you know. You're also down. holding yourself into a to a higher standard because once you do that, you can't have somebody appear where they shouldn't be. That's not feasible. Well, exactly. But that's why I had the map because it had to make sense. Right? Gives you some limitations, I guess, to write within and keep yeah. things. I suppose I've never so, written track. But I also make, so I made that cover myself. So there's stuff you can do for free. Oh, I know. I never yeah. said you can't do it for no, free. No, I'm just saying because some people don't know, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and I made this cover myself. This was my poetry, which I don't expect anyone to buy because it has color pictures in it, so it's crazy expensive. Where is that door? Did you say, where is the door? Yeah. If you made it yourself, did you take the picture of the door? No, there's um, oh, okay. places online that you can get royalty, royalty-free free photos okay. that you can use. Fair enough. Can I, I was excited you? to hear if there was a door somewhere I could find that you took a picture of because it's a cool-looking door. Actually, if you're going to recite one, recite this one. <laughs> Hmm. Is there? You're looking for a specific something to read? Well, I thought since she's afraid nobody's gonna buy one, what better way to? Why would I be? Afraid? Oh, that one. Oh, geez. The Sumerians. Which, which book is this? So this is this one was done by an Sumerians. artist. She actually drew that. Okay. And she drew my new one, which I just finished writing two days ago. <laughs> the end. And she already, I do the cover. It's called art. The End? No, I typed The End the other oh. day. Oh. <laughs> it's called Wife and Death. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you can read that? Yeah, sure. Read in your dark voice. <laughs> you, uh, I, you show that off at Beatty's a lot, don't you? Just, just, they like it. Your narrating voice. It's the only reason we like them. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Better keep it up or I'm they're not going to keep you around. Okay, go. I'm okay. <laughs> what is it the Sumerian Sumerian the Sumerian when the clock strikes midnight and the clouds blanket the moonlight Sumerian shadows shift from their <laughs> ethereal rift waiting in the wings with the patience of all dead things there's no period seeking the light of living souls angst and neurosis their deepest goals aching to be free of the Tenebrous veils, only the strongest hearts shall prevail. Don't let the Sumerian shadows in. For if you do, chances are they will win. There you go. 
Ooh, I got goosebumps. Is uh, any more of the book that, like, poetic? No. No? Okay. <laughs> it was nice to listen to, anyways. Yeah, I just, I don't know why. When I was ready, like, the book was already written, and I was like, I think I'm going to write a poem for this. Yeah. And I did, yeah. It's chapter two. Billy and Madison. Any inspiration Billy to Madison. those names? <laughs> That's interesting. <laughs> <laughs> like, not even subtle. Do you know what? Because the oh, the very beginning of it was a short story that I wrote, like in 2016, and then people were like, "Oh my God, this short story is amazing! It should be a novel." So I made the short story the prologue, that happened like 10 years before the novel. So in in the one of the chapters, and I couldn't tell you which chapter now, one of the characters does make fun of their names, Billy Madison. Okay, yes. so that makes sense. Yeah. Hey, sexy. Jackie whistled. I, I oh, yeah, love. this is the one that has um, one of my fellow co-workers, Jackie. Jackie, you're going to have to watch this now because you're in the book and we just talked about you. There you go. You got another beer. Uh, por favor. <laughs> but yeah, there's a, she speaks Spanish in here, so I have Spanish. Ooh. So for something like that, did you have somebody properly trans? No, you didn't. I did. You, you, no, you I did. did. I did because I, I would Google as I went along. I'd be like, hey, she's going to say a sentence. I would Google the sentence, how to say it in Spanish, and then put it in. And then I got Jackie, who speaks Spanish and reads and writes <laughs> Spanish, to read it and fix my Spanish for me. Because you, you can't just Google Spanish and put it no. in the book and it be accurate. It would have cultural references and things that would not make any yeah. sense yeah. in Spanish. I know, and I, so she did that for me. She made well, it. good. She made it good for me. And I think we talked about this before. Are your books only available in English, or do you have translated? Um, actually, you can order them. Like, if you go on Amazon Japan, you can order it in Japanese. Who does the translation? They, Amazon must. And do you pay a fee for them to do the translation? No. So they just, so it's only the ebooks that get the translation? They can't yes. buy a physical... So it's just an algorithm that's going to translate it automatically. I don't know how yeah, good that would be. Oh my god, you know what we should do? Try to get somebody who speaks another language, read one of the books, and We should buy about, one. Yeah. We should get you, we should get you back buy one buy a spanish one and get jackie on jackie to try to it. review how bad the amazon spanish translation the automatic is. translate because yeah. i'd imagine there's definitely difficulties with yeah. that i'm sure there is but it's pretty ballsy on them to be like yeah we'll sell it to you we'll sell it to you translated they have to be they have to be confident in their people product. must yeah. like a japanese person can read it and be like this is terrible like i don't <laughs> understand what's going on <laughs> like even words like I like Cata- I'll have to go and see cataclysm that they, is, that's spelled a, like that isn't you can't i think some english words don't translate though. no like certain puns and certain yeah. things don't yeah. make sense yeah some of it wouldn't but i and also have cultural references wouldn't make sense yeah. either sometimes no i have two of my books in audio as well and they're through amazon so if you click on the book on amazon oh, it narratives. actually gives you three options you have your ebook your paperback or your audio the audio book is something that i wanted to get into who narrates narrating. them as uh, actors okay yeah through amazon though through right? amazon. or through audible through audible they do a lot of stuff wow. yeah you just upload your book and then people actually audition um you have two ways because you do have to pay for it yes you can either pay Fair. by 50 dollars an hour is the lowest you're allowed to offer uh per reading hour of the actual book so it could take them 20 hours but if it only takes like three to to listen to the book, then that's all you pay for. Um, or you can do a 50-50 hmm. split on royalties for life. I guess it really depends on how ambitious you are and how well you think it's going to sell as to what's the better yeah, the better exactly. offer at that point. Well, and that's what I Do said. you get to choose the terms? or do yeah. the, So you get to choose the terms. So that's good because that at least yeah. way you'd well, be able to... Because if you post it, it's posted there. And then when narrators go on, they can be like, okay, well, I'm not going to read your book for... 50 bucks an hour so it's up to them as well usually it's people starting out mm-hmm. and there's more expensive people that yeah. sound better and have some yeah. credibility you right samuel jackson it's gonna cost you you know 50 can you get him on there <sighs> i why would i want with, I with enough I want. money you can do anything that's like, true yeah, yeah, i can exactly. imagine yeah but i wonder if they i'll have to check it out i wonder if they have actual celebrities who are because like older oh, celebrities do. yeah you, so on audible you, yeah if you go to, yeah google it what if you want to get Arnold yeah. Schwarzenegger? Yeah, I'll just blow my <laughs> life savings. Because you you think no, about I it. Him. No, but you think about it. If you have a book that you think it might say, it might be okay, I just need to get a reason for people, or I need to get people to listen to it. 
you just blow all your money on the audiobook. <laughs> if you have that budget, you can probably get a really good book together that people will read anyways. So. True. So no, I, I thought that was interesting because I'm slowly working the way up to having enough equipment to be able to to narrate an audiobook. Yeah, you could do it. You could make money. You're pretty close. We probably just need like a recording studio with like sound damp and walls and mm-hmm. that's about it. Got the mix for the mics and yeah. pop filters. And then you'd have to find out what their policies are because, you know, they have certain ways that you're supposed to like pause between chapters and all that stuff. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, so it's really cool though. It, it is a very continuous experience as far as the formatting goes because listening to one audible book to another you really it is the same formatting the way they take pauses and read chapter titles and things like that mm-hmm. so yeah. i when i was doing the baby photo sales i bought a bunch of sales audiobooks from chapters and they were obviously independently published audiobooks yeah because it sounded like it was recorded in a mm-hmm. tin can yeah you can do that too actually but i don't think you can put it on audible maybe you can if it's up to their standards, possibly, but... Yeah, I mean, it may have changed since then, right? Because if I want, I could read my own book and upload it, but they do have rules that you have to follow, so... And they so have to you, approve it. So if you wanted, you could take even a... Like a... Even this oh. right here. My sudden death one I read on YouTube. <laughs> right. I do have that one out there. Which is horrible, but... I think I even have a warning. The dog barks. Because <laughs> I'm a dog. She barked while I was reading. That's one thing you couldn't do if you got published through a publisher is just read your own book at that point because you don't really have the exclusive rights to everything anymore. So it's kind of a nice thing about being yeah. self-published. That is true. You have complete you yeah, have complete over ownership everything. over anything. Like the artwork even. Because I did get a cover. Because I don't know why. When I start writing a book, I get a cover made. It's almost like my inspiration. inspiration. I have a cover, so I have to finish the book for the cover. And the one that I sent to the... Um, to Brian, I have a cover for already. When you sent it to him, did you send it like an actual manuscript, or did you have it bound and ready? It would just be a manuscript, right? No, I just send it as an ebook now. An ebook. You know, it's so much easier. You just technologically savvy. I guess the days of mailing transcripts is over. Well, because he has, if you want to mail it to him, it's an additional twenty five dollars. Oh well, ebook sounds good. Oh well, yeah, why wouldn't I just send it to you in an ebook? No, oh, that's true. That makes that makes a lot of sense. Yeah. Uh, writer's block. Do you Doesn't get it? Exist. You don't have. I writer's... don't believe in writer's block. I believe in. Oh, I don't feel like writing today. I'm going to go watch TV. That's not writer's block. Okay. But you don't. You don't. You don't map out your stories. No. So you have to creatively get into a situation where you have to work yourself out of it. Or do you I just... don't think about it. I just write, I just start writing, and it's like watching a movie in my mind, and I'm trying to keep up to the movie that's playing in my mind. And when I get too tired and I need to rest, you know, because I can't write, like, sit there and write for, well, sometimes I've written, sit, sat for 16 hours, but. It's a lot of cocaine, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, and then I just. Or your, what was, what was your call, it was, um, you've talked about I've told this, like, six times on the podcast. When I was. A student. I Just to give her students. writing inspiration. Some students use illegal stimulants. I've never been oh, one yeah. of those students. Yeah, but like Ritalin or whatever, right? Yeah. But yeah. I did find out somewhat through an accident that acetaminophen, the decongestion, is a stimulant. So, and they used it to make meth in Breaking Bad. But anyways, yes. <laughs> I, I had that. I had a bit of coffee and I sat down into work and then I realized, wait a minute, three hours has gone by. Oh, I have about, you know, 10 pages I've written. That's good. Where the hell did the time go? Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's what it's like when I write now, and I don't need anything to go no, with it. No, that, that's pretty oh, it's, good. It's insane. What You said that you were a very quick reader. How fast are you for as a typist? Uh, not as fast as I would like to be. I've never actually timed myself. I don't really pay attention. I just start writing, no. and I don't You never got like a word per minute count? No. Huh? There's a lot of little websites and stuff to, you can go on to check that. If you're going to go work in like a call center job, they always make you sit down. And like do the word per minute. It means nothing. Really? If you can type faster than thirty words per minute, you're hired. So and I think yeah, just I, about anybody I don't can. Even know. Yeah. I haven't but I make a lot done that of in mistakes. years. Yeah, I, I mean, I would imagine that most people that are sitting at a keyboard all day, even if they don't take the time to get the proper form down, are probably typing close to sixty to eighty words per minute or something yeah. reasonable like that. Yeah. 
That's... I, I can't remember. I know we did it... We did it once in college, and that was a big thing, using our computer time way back in grade school. Yeah, but I had to do that stuff, too. I can't remember ever actually being tested on it in high school. I think a really quick yeah. type is just like 120. I had to do it in type, because, I mean, back when I was in school, it was typing class. It was on a typewriter typing, and I had to do it then, but hmm. that's way too long ago. I don't remember. Was that... Uh, this sounds bad, but was that a, a general class or was that a woman's only class? Because the typing is quite no, often a secretarial. Was, back then it was general. Okay. Yeah, it was, it was like a mandatory class that everyone had to take. But they knew at that point that computers were coming, right? Because it was the 80s. It's not like I went to school in the 70s. I'm not that old. I never specified <laughs> that, but... Okay. No, but they were gearing us up because computers were there. They were coming. So, But I also... Um, one thing that I give people heck for, and I just actually wrote a book on how to write, to write and self-publish. I just finished writing it. I'm just waiting for editing. It's really meta. Is like people like. Why aren't you self <laughs> Fuck that up. Why aren't you self-publishing it? I am. Come on. No. I, I still have to pay for an editor. Yeah. Because my grammar sucks, big time. Hmm. Uh, anyway, but a lot of people will say, "Well, I don't have time to write." In the age of technology, how do you not have time to write? You have your phone. You have your tablet. You're, they're with you all the time. <laughs> what are you guys laughing at? Uh, we know a person that refuses to write because they just won't use like a 20-minute break or, or some time between something. Well, she also works at a place that makes it incredibly hard to do so. Well, yeah. Like, there's a lot. I write on my lunch break. I mean, Yeah, I know. And I've learned that. I mean, the other day I was sitting outside because it's summertime. I want to be outside, but I want to utilize my time to write. So I take my tablet, I got a Bluetooth keyboard, and I sit outside and I write. That's what I do. I have my iPad and Bluetooth keyboard at my yeah. bedside, and I'll write a sentence or two before I go to bed, or more if yeah. it's not too late. And I've learned how to write. Like, my husband's sitting there with company, and they're talking, and the music's playing, and dogs are barking, and I'm... Don't even pay attention. You're a great host, too. Just because you were ignoring everybody. That was a joke. Never mind. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, I do. I totally ignore them. They could be talking to me. I wouldn't even know it. But also, and then the one day, like, I was really into what I was doing, but I had to stop to cook dinner. So I took my phone with me, and I just uh, hit Messenger Record. And I was and just talking. did an audio. Yeah. yeah. And then I just email that to myself, or whatever. Send it to my, me it's in my Messenger. Send it to myself in Messenger. Go there, copy, paste, put it in the story. I love technology. It, you were using straight voice to text in that case? Yeah. Ooh, that that'd be an editing nightmare. I imagine if you did a lot of that, because that it doesn't always come out perfect. Oh no, it never does. No, no. like you have to put in your punctuation properly. Yes. And, uh, so when you're doing that, and... are you are you saying it? Because when I send messages to people when I'm driving and whatnot, and I have to do it verbally, I do be like, "Hey, period, how's it going today?" Question mark. And yada yada yada. That's not even that bad. It's really? when you get into like apostrophes and stuff. No. If you need to like give it a specific I wonder if it does that yeah, and I can't... it's not going to be like chapters and chapters and chapters no, right it's just going to be well, I can imagine somebody maybe with a a disability that could not move well, arms to write well, could do that well then you have Dragon Naturally Speaking I, which is a program god I haven't heard that name of that program for years we still sell it to disabled people how how old is that program I it swear is, that was like the best one it's been hello, around for period I, I remember when I a long time ago when Me? I would look up voice to text i always hear about that one yeah. i i don't think i think it was expensive so i couldn't it get is it expen it's very expensive, expensive yeah. because you can actually program it so that if you say period question mark quotations or whatever hmm. it will accurately put them in hmm. but i mean for myself i don't need that because i just do but your it. phone can do your phone should be able to do it did you just do that on your yeah phone? and it'll do and apostrophe that also being said my phone what does notice well i mean i do it you know, messenger yeah i just do it through the through the standard dictation on my phone. I don't know where it is right now. That's funny. So do you message your writing person? Like your like who do you who do you send it to? I send it to myself. <coughs> you can send things to yourself on Yeah. Message. Well you have two separate or do you send it to your self self? I send it to my self self. Oh. See it says Teresa. Well, yeah, I didn't know you can message yourself. I didn't know that either. I've I've just had like a chat where I would dump things. Okay, and somebody I, else gets it. I had Here we a go. That's text to speech, but it was worse than this. Huh. The sun crested the horizon as the car turned from 
the <laughs> Brer Wood back towards town, aiming for Transcenda 1 and back to Van. Where are yo? A, E baby, you're awake. It me, Uncle Holo. He lifted his eyes to the review mirror. So the child in the back seat, J, back J seat, could see that she knows him. Uncle, yeah. And where are we going exactly? Last I remember, I was in bed sleeping. So suspicions confirmed it would be an editing nightmare, but Holo Brow Knit. The <laughs> the Sims? <laughs> the voice was still that his five year old niece, but why she spoke was not. He <laughs> stammered a moment. Well I A you see uh are you okay, E baby? In the back the five year old face contorted with nature thoughts. <laughs> I have to per bad you need to stop Teresa AM PM to block up and go and to the left go there I'm intrigued I want to read the rest you're getting, of that you can't even guess what it is from that but see I, <laughs> I know and I knew I had to get that like scene out so it helped me it's there it's done I don't have to think about it for like an hour I can finish what I'm doing and then go to my computer and continue, right? That's fair. Mm-hmm. It's an interesting way of doing it. I have done something similar, but I do just voice re- uh, voice recording, and then I'll just type it out later. Well, I mean, I'm also walking around the kitchen doing stuff. Right? I keep my phone so in my it's pocket. not always going to hear when I'm... I don't always have to. Yeah, I think it may be... Maybe the recording and typing it out later would probably be what I would prefer if I was to do that. Yeah. Because then at least you get it down, written down properly at the end. And there's less editing and no guessing as, as to what you were saying. Yeah. Hmm. And do you, I think you get both a copy. I can't remember what it is, but at least in the notes application on my phone, when you say stuff and it's doing a voice to text, you also get the audio file with it. It's in Google Keep or whatever. You probably got really? it on your phone. Yeah. That's neat. Yeah. If, if like you go to take a note and you dictate it, it It'll keep, give you both. I'll give a point to Google for that one. That is convenient and neat. Yeah, Apple does phone. not yeah. do that. Apple sucks. There's probably, and you probably could download Google app, Keep. Maybe. Uh, it's not. It's it's my favorite note taking application, anyways. I gotta somehow find how to play your app. I'm surpri- I mean, hopefully it's accepted on the Apple App Store. Yeah, I was gonna say you should check the Apple App Store. I did. I did you right did? here because nothing, nothing, nothing on there. Uh-huh. Hmm. that's yeah. fine i'll yeah. just have to borrow somebody's android phone to play it so i think i don't think i finished telling you that i know <laughs> that reminds me going all the way back to the that's great you yes. asked me uh her name is lisa crawford and she was getting into the acting business and then she was really intrigued by the directing side of it so she's decided to move into making her own films mm-hmm. and um in the past for other things just to make money because she's an entrepreneur she made apps so she, so she had the skills so she had the, she knew to do who to talk to and to make the app so oh. she made the app because she's making she's the one making the film that I, I think i'd give it a try we should we should review it later well you have you'd have an android phone that i do play. and i can i can do that then because um do you know what the plot of the app is, is it a game like yeah, so it's the demon is um, somewhere in the game, and you have to find him. So it's a walking game. Yeah, and then when I, I'm not sure if you're supposed to like. I think you're supposed to do something to him to kill him, and if you don't, he kills you. Yeah. Sounds like a plot of a game. Yeah, <laughs> and of course my tagline was death. There's an app for that, and now there literally is an app for that. That's cool. <laughs> Morbid. So it, it's cool. Yeah. yeah. Well, which is funny, because I was actually writing... Which book was I writing? I was writing this book, Kept. So this is... I ventured into science fiction. I don't know why, but I had an idea that I really was interested in. Um, But it's tough, because the people... Humans are trapped in Kepler by aliens. The moon? Um, Yeah, So, but they have no... They have no... The light? The planet. They have no... Planet Planet Kepler? They have nothing that's human. They have like nothing. They've been stripped of everything. They have nothing. So I'm like, how the hell do I write a story 
where there's nothing to interact with other than people. So it was really, really tough for me. Hmm. Um, and somehow I just heard something on TV, like, you know, wash your dishes. There's an app for that. Whatever. Like, it was just like, app for that, app for that. And I'm actually getting sick of hearing wash it. Wash your dishes? I'm <laughs> just saying. Okay, I was just like, saying, I want to find that app. For everything, right? Yeah. So I was like, well, death, why can't there be an app for that? And I had the idea, and I wrote that story in 30 days. Somewhere in the world, there's like a funeral services place that's got an app, and, and that's probably their tagline. All of them now. All of them? I wonder. You, it, you can actually watch all the funerals online. Oh, I, I wasn't necessarily thinking live streaming of funerals. But yeah, that's a thing, too, that's quite... A, like a lot of people do it now. Well, that's but I was thinking like, more yeah, like... Um, there's an app for everything. Like an app where you could put in like your headstone arrangements or something. Probably. Probably. Well, there's it's funeral. a good tagline. You should you should trademark that. Yeah, I should. Death, there's an app for that. Funeral home. If you search funeral home, there's... Okay, that's funny. Uh, the funeral home that my father used to manage actually has app. an app. Really? Yeah. It's a reference app. I wonder, current services, past services about us, our staff. I don't think I can book my own funeral, but... <laughs> <laughs> I mean, plan my own I funeral. Say, Boy, like, <laughs> you know, I wanted, I wanted die, on this, this date. <laughs> I like. Well, I mean, unless you're planning on a suicide, and then you know you're telling people. Wow, yourself, that went dark. Would, uh, intervene. No, oh, I'm a horror writer. And a children's writer. I, and a ch- I don't know why I got into science fiction because I'm not really a fan of reading science fiction. I don't really care. Do you for read it, your but... books? We well, do. I mean, you so have to. Probably, I know, but after hundreds. it's done, like when you get it in the mail and it's a cover, do you sit down and you're like, oh, I'm accomplished. Well, the, but through. then you have the inevitability of finding a mistake in like That's the true. first two pages. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Because, I, well, I have to proof it as well mm-hmm. when I get the paperback. So, oh my God, do you know how many times I read these things? You get sick of reading them. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Do you know how many times I watch wedding videos over and over again? <laughs> yeah, but it's not the same one. Yeah. It well, it's for a while, yeah. Really? Yeah. Uh, Making sure it's all cut together right. And you know how many wedding photos he good. looks through over and yeah. over again? Luckily, I, not too many times. Yeah, because things start to blur and you just well, miss shit, right? Yeah. The, so that's why I pay for an editor. The process for editing photos is not bad. I, I say that the video is a lot worse because the photos, I, what I do is I just go through them all, get, delete the ones that I don't want outright, and then as I, I just go through and I edit them in order, and then I maybe sometimes select a few more that I don't want to include, and that's about it. It's about the process. I only have to look at them a maximum of like two or three times. Mm. Not terrible. But not as bad as reading your own book about a hundred times. Yeah. After yeah. At least six, I would say. Yeah. When I go back to the books I'm writing, I have to read through most of them again just to remember where I left off. Because certain <laughs> oh, plot points too. and yeah. stuff that yeah. I forget. And then I read and I'm like, wait a second, this is good. Uh-huh. Like, there's some good shit That's here. That's the funny thing about creating something yourself yeah. is looking back, you're like, ah, I see where I was going with that. that and then good. some of the stuff is like, oh yeah, I was drunk in Cuba when I wrote that. That's got to go. <laughs> and then, oh, yeah, I don't want to do this anymore. No. So you try to find a way around it. Like the, <laughs> I think I told you the Christmas movie that we're writing had somebody another Beatties person Beatties is filled with multi-talented creative people it's a good place they're everywhere you just gotta <laughs> talk to people um and he read the Christmas script and quite a few people read it we did a read through we had our own changes and sat down and we talked he's like okay so you kind of kind of open it like it's a a school type movie like a Christmas movie kind of like school romance yeah and college they, right Pardon? Like college. Yeah. yeah. And then they go to school for one day. And then that's it. And you, there's no other scenes in school. He's like, so what if you just got rid of school altogether? Like, that's a ballsy suggestion. And I'm currently working on a draft that no longer has the school. That changes so much, in it my It changes a lot. But there's ways around it. Because he didn't just say, get rid of the school. Goodbye. We actually talked through it. Okay. And some of it makes sense. I want to read that draft. I'm working on it. I'm on, like, page... Because the, the beginning has changed a lot. Does Tila know about this? He, she knows that there's big changes, yeah. Okay. But it's not like I've deleted the other one. No. I still like the other one, too. But he makes a good point. It wasn't bad, but come to think of it, yeah. They, why did they in college? It, it didn't really <laughs> See? matter. So this... <laughs> I mean, it got a reason for the character to move. The story's a little college. bit more streamlined. It takes a very cliched approach at the beginning, but it's actually just a miss... Uh, like a... 
to misguide, uh, miss. So when are you planning on completing that? The the script. Put a hard date on it. I can't challenge yourself. Um, well, you should. I mean, it makes it okay. So I t- I was. It gives you a goal, right? I was driving my nephew somewhere last Christmas, and I was telling him because he really likes Santa a lot. And I told him I was writing a Christmas movie, mm-hmm. and he's young, so he doesn't know that this doesn't always equate right away to being a DVD on a shelf. Mm-hmm. So I said, I'm writing a movie, a Christmas movie. And he's like, when does it come out? So I, I got to kind of explain it. And I said, probably when you're, you know, 30? 13, 14. He's seven now. So I'd like to. It's a good it's a wide breadth. It is a wide amount of time, but it all depends on how you do it. You don't like the aspect of planning that I do. Okay. When I started writing it, I wanted to sell it. Now I think it'd be something fun to do. And if I'm going to do it and you're going to do it right, there needs to be a proper funding channel. You need to find a way to either do it with a with a small budget or find a way to make some money for it. So there's there's ways to take time. I'm not just going to grab a camera and do something. That's how I do things. It's a two, two different approaches. No, it's a it's a different strategy, and that's why talking is kind of neat because I respect. I just can't do it. I can't, I mean, it was annoying to have a script that was seven drafts in and then somebody's like, change this and it, oh, back to draft one. It's a lot of, yeah. even though yeah. the way that the, the writing works, a lot of the scenes still exist. It's just, they have to be retrofitted slightly to fit in. So we didn't, we didn't just restart. We just tried to make a new cohesive story yeah because mm-hmm. if you don't have them in school a lot you're really just changing some of the locations yeah. right and some of the interactions so yeah it's a neat way of doing things yeah because i was thinking of writing a movie but i just i hate script writing <laughs> <laughs> i love it i i like both but script writing script writing is just different because i even though that when i write books i still try to picture them as a movie when i'm writing a script it is a movie. There's, there's no way of doing. It. There's no other way of doing it. You don't write a script to write a book. You write a script no. to turn it into a movie. But that's what I mean. It's weird because when I'm writing, it's like watching a movie in my head. But to write a script, because you have to put somebody said this and somebody said so that. So you're afraid of the formatting. It's formatting. The, you're, you're. There are. You get taken out of. She's. I have written scripts. Okay, but there are ones. applications and stuff that make it much easier to follow the formatting, yeah. almost automatic. So. She did. Didn't you do that one script in Microsoft Word? Mm-hmm. Yeah, that would so be she terrible. Reformatted that everything. Would be freaking <laughs> terrible. Microsoft Word. I would not want to do that. I wouldn't either. We had to. We didn't have cell text or anything like that in college, but we did have to learn how to properly format scripts. Even though there's there's ways of doing it. So he said, "Yeah, you're gonna learn how to do it." And then if you want to write your scripts on whatever software you have, that's fine. It's not hard to learn. It's hard to it's hard to remember when you're in that creative mindset. And then you're like, oh, yeah, I have to put a transition. You can't just hit period, go space, space, and continue. Uh, transition, it's a hard cut to the next scene or it's a fade or whatever. Yeah. I heard a radio conversation debating the other day of if – period space space is the proper weight instead of just having one space after a period oh I'm yeah in, no I'm that's enter, old enter. school yeah. but because it was something setting. to do with t- yes where now everything's computerized and the computer automatically gives you the correct space for printing yes so you're not supposed to do it anymore and some old school people still do do it and then they and get, you get extra space they get yeah when yeah. they do ebooks and stuff it's all messed up and people actually have huge arguments on Facebook about it. Yeah, no, I, I kind of, I figured there was some kind of controversy about it after hearing about it on the radio. Yeah. It's something I had never thought about. And me, I'm like, I never even heard of that. And I grew up in the 80s. Mm-hmm. And they're like, well, yeah, you would have had to. I'm like, oh, I don't know. I was in BC. Is it different there? I don't know. <laughs> I never heard of that. <laughs> yeah. That's interesting. Yeah. And it makes sense. There's certain ways of doing things years ago that you just don't have to That's do it anymore. It doesn't make yeah. sense anymore, no. That being said, good old BD is still selling typewriter uh, ribbon, and you still get the bunch of people coming in looking for typewriter rib- type, type, type. typewriter ribbon 
So that means there's still a small percentage of people out there that are still yeah, typing on a typewriter. Five of them, because oh my god, they might not exist anymore. Hipsters. <laughs> no, I, there's oh, never, there's not been a young person that come in. The neat oh, thing on, about it be, is, there's got to be hip, bearded hipsters on typewriters writing their novels in Starbucks. Yeah. And, and they bring their typewriter to Starbucks. Yes, yes actually, is. typewriters in general are coming back. So it makes sense. That's that, one thing I don't think should come. Yeah, back. but that's. Yeah, but have you seen the new one? It's like you, it's a typewriter, and it automatically goes to your computer. This is this is a dumb it's nostalgia pointless. trip. I don't. Yeah. I can't get behind that. And it's I like I should on record player. Come on. Yeah, but, no, but the record player. No, no, but I can appreciate that. It's got a unique aesthetic and sound to it, and everything. And it it and serves a function. And you're using something that is from the time period. You have okay, a type. Do you not? Is there not a bazillion record players out there still? They gotta make new ones. No, you don't. I I buy probably an old one. Get a good deal on eBay or something. Exactly. But I, and I shoot old film cameras, and I I can appreciate old things. A typewriter, a mechanical device, is just a transition into what we have now. That just you could cut it out. It wasn't efficient enough. You yeah. have to spend a lot of money to keep it going. It's gonna break, and then nobody's gonna know how to fix it. Like it's just, it's not worth the hassle. I don't Tom think. Hanks loves his typewriters. Well, this, he's a big he's typewriter probably collector. a very eccentric guy. So, yes. Yeah. He responds. Oh, to collecting them. That that's fine. Collecting them makes sense. I don't think yeah. using he, them. No, he responds to all of his fan letters on different typewriters. You know what? That's a. There is certain use case scenarios that make more sense. If he can still get ink Cause, for the because you can. You, I think if anybody could get ribbon and ink, probably it'd him. be Tom Hanks. But yeah. but that makes sense because you could write out a page and just send it. Like you're good to go. It's not like you're writing in a book. Yeah. Where no, you're just, just like oh my god. It's like oh better write the fourth draft. <laughs> <laughs> no, that that would be terrible. Yeah, that was another reason that I didn't really start writing a long time ago is because I'm You're lazy. clearly lazy and impatient. <laughs> I am. I'm lazy and I'm impatient. Like I'm done. You're I'm, a you're I'm a not a multiple plate, draft person, next. are you? No. Huh. No, I read it from beginning to end and hope nothing really major has to change because <laughs> I don't want to redo it. Ooh. It's a very I, different I, way I of writing. I couldn't do that. I, I can't do it either. My thesis project, which is only like 70 pages long, was rewritten probably about 70 times. That's different, though. That's that's important to your grade and final. A book, I think it, I'd put as much care into it, I would imagine. You've got to, I don't know, I just reread yeah, it, it all over and over. Yeah, it kind of personally, right, on what you're... Most of the stuff that changed wasn't it wasn't the results of the experiment. It was how I described it. Right. Yeah, so it was yeah. a lot of just writing skills at that point. So when you were writing your thesis, did it have to be 70 pages or was there... No, there wasn't. There isn't really a limit. Like you think it usually is going to land somewhere between 50 and 100, but but that's... It managed to be quite in the middle, but... And that's... It's a lot of... It's not like the written components that much. It's like probably six pages of that as references to articles and, and things. There's a lot of... And there's a lot of formatting, like a title page and there's a certain, you know, certain number of pages with an abstract and whatever, all that stuff to it, but... But yeah, just pure writing, probably 40-something pages of it. It's mm-hmm. double-spaced. I write, like, uh, essay writing in college. Some of it was okay. I was lucky enough that I had I got to skip the first semester writing course. So I had to do a test. You got to skip it? Yeah, we had to do it the first week, first day. Uh, we had to do kind of like an aptitude test almost. Mm-hmm. Uh, if we were up to the college English writing standards, we didn't have to take the first semester. I wish I was granted that ability. <laughs> I did really well in English in school. That was I one of, one of my didn't do courses. as well in English as I thought. And then when I took the test, so like pick a topic, write this essay, it has to follow this whatever format. I did it. I passed. So like, we'll see you in January. I'm like, what? Nice. It's pretty good. So, that was nice. I was, I, I always thought they almost gave things, like they would tell you to write an essay, and it's like, we're reading Shakespeare's Macbeth, or or whatever. And then they're like, okay, you gotta present, you know, this these themes. It I don't know, it just seems so easy. Like, I just read the thing, I know exactly what you want me to write. You could hand it in, get like a 95, and be done with it. Themes and whatnot, for whatever reason for me, it took a long time to grasp, even though I was still writing and high school uh come grade nine when we first started to hit shakespeare and whatnot it took a while to understand thematic elements in writing like uh with romeo and juliet or lord of the flies lord of the flies i absolutely still cannot get through i don't mind it i can't a lot of people hated it i hated it i don't i don't mind it but the the 
the story the the story itself is interesting i can't get through the, the reading it and the audiobook the teacher gave me it's like an audiobook from the 80s Ooh. so he was like and then piggy said oh boy <laughs> It's not good. It's uh, that book is almost entirely just on themes and alluding to things that are going on in the real world. And oh, like, yeah. This guy's opi- opinion of what children are like should they be left un unregulated. No and then somebody was like, "Oh, we're gonna modernize it." And they made a made-for-TV movie based on Lord of the Flies, and right off the bat, you knew that nobody understood the themes because it was co-ed. Whole idea is all—it's all—it's a male-based yeah, it's type to be thing. Boys. Once you add women, the entire story arc changes because now there's, now there's sex appeal in this. Uh, it wasn't very good. How old were the children know. in the Lord of the they Flies? They were young because they, like they were eleven, yeah, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, yeah, like it's kind of that age. I can't remember. In this movie, they were like sixteen, teenagers. seventeen, eighteen. Because it's probably easier to film very with teenagers. Bodacious. Yeah, and that's a really weird adaptation. It, it, it is. I've seen that. Now, it, I think it'd be hard to film the original, like, word for word kind of. Like, I, I don't think flies. you'd be able to adapt it into a modern. Uh, it, it being a period piece, maybe you might be able to get away with, like, maybe an Oscar bait type thing, but to release it as a general movie. No, no it wouldn't work. Probably it wouldn't. Um, yeah, the that There's movie. That... We also we mentioned Shakespeare before. All I think all modern adaptations of Shakespeare, like if they try to set it in the modern day world, they've all dirt so bad. Well, except we, for we're the Lion King, forced to watch some of them. No, but that's changing it enough that I think it, it's going on the same themes as that. But it's not like. So what are you saying? Like the the Romeo I've and seen Juliet the, yes. with Leonardo DiCaprio? That is yes, disgusting. that is by all accounts horrible. Is, Have you oh, seen it? So no, bad. I don't watch that kind of crap. Oh, oh so. Oh. Interesting concept. They take the Ugh. original Shakespearean dialogue mm-hmm. and modernize it. So instead of a sword fight, it's a gun fight, but they're still talking. Uh, mm-hmm. When they're like, I bite my thumb at you, they're just giving the finger. Instead of, yeah. Well, Iambic pentameter doesn't work in modern no. day conversation. So, an interesting experiment, I guess. But well, they've done that a lot. But I can't even remember what the one was if it was Macbeth it was flip and weird it was like an <laughs> alternative yeah kind of movie it was weird i mean the chick is there in the swamp with like the cut of her hands and she had sticks in her hands and it was, I was like what the hell am i Whoa. watching <laughs> <laughs> it was really weird it does sound strange. a lot of that it almost lends itself more to being animated because i mean there's a lot of like hallucinations and stuff in Macbeth that would look kind of cool if you could get in someone's mind uh, but but no, I don't know. I, I feel I like... I think it's been done to death. And I feel like Macbeth and Romeo and Juliet, the work in school, they are obviously classic works of literature, but the best place to see anything like that... Theater. Theater. Yeah. I'd kill to go see Twelfth Night. Twelfth <laughs> Night's my favorite... Tw- okay, well, Twelfth Night is a classic Shakespearean I did read Tell the Two Seas by Dick... Dick, Dick. Dixon? What's on your what mind? Dixon who? What is his name? Oh my god. I'm getting tired. <laughs> well. Charles Dickens. Charles Dickens. There we go. That's the Classic writer. Literature that I've ever read. Is that is that older than Franken you you didn't read Frankenstein or anything I've like never that? Read Frankenstein. Really? I tried to listen to um, Dracula on my phone there the other day. So you... I couldn't even... I'm like, this is like written by a two-year-old. What the hell? Mm -hmm. You're a little... I'm getting lost in your books. You can. What? What are you looking for? Oh, it's not even on... Wait. Oh, there it is. You, Little Miss, trying to come up with a new urban legend. And yet you can't read the urban legends of... I don't have to. Centuries. That's what I said. There's so many hundreds of adaptations. Embedded in culture as it is. It's true. The originals are probably not the best. I mean, I, I know Frankenstein's a pretty good book, but I don't really know what the original Dracula. Was Dracula like. is also horrible. The Dracula. I read the original Dracula play. Mm. Sorry. <laughs> it's too late. It's already on me. Spraying it. I spit on you. <sighs> I read the original Dracula play, but it's different, and obviously, it's different to read a script rather than to see it, but. 
Yeah, I wanna. I'm gonna go to the used bookstore and I wanna get some of the the paperbacks and like read them because trying to listen to the audio, it was like, it was no good. A lot of those are just available for free since all the they're public domain. Yeah, they're at public this point. domain. Yeah, but I don't like reading on my phone. Okay. You work. I only do that when I have to. We're gonna place the print out paper. <laughs> I'm not gonna pay to print it. You wouldn't. But pay you would pay anyways. to buy the book. Yeah, you, I guess. you might as well just buy it. What? <laughs> I'm not saying that on tape. <laughs> but speaking of this one here which is an anthology with a whole bunch of other writers right. is no longer in print huh. so I'm going to have it because I'm going to be at the Frightmare in the Falls in October which is like a Frightmare. horror comic con yeah yeah so Where? I mean, like, what's the venue uh, it's at the Scotiabank okay in the falls Scotiabank what are you doing there center. I know what it's you're doing It's a big there, convention center. I'm going to have my books for sale, which is why I made sure to finish my new book, so I'll have a new book to present. So you have a booth there? I'm going to have a booth. Is it with anybody, or is it just you? Just me. Just you? Mm-hmm. I have to get a banner made. I'm just waiting for a new logo, so I can get a banner. But I'm going to have, because I have two copies of these, so I'm going to have one of these for sale for 100 bucks. Do you think you'll sell it? I don't know. We'll see. Pretty dedicated fan, I is think. Is it going to be autographed? Well, it have to be. Is this the one that you were talking about? Is a collaboration also with that bigger writer as well? No. No. Um, Never mind. Are you talking about? I okay. Yeah, the one that we can't get into. Uh, William F. Nolan. Yes. Oh, that no, that's totally different. Uh, this hundred. These are hundred word stories. So every story is only a hundred words long. And you're in there. And I'm in here. And why? And William F. Nolan is in here, and he wrote Logan's Run. Hmm. So uh, that was pretty exciting for me, because so, I'm like, there is like a legit famous author in here with me. Uh, same with Richard Chismar, and he he has written that Ben uh, Gwen, Gwendolyn's Buttons with Stephen King. Oh, okay. Button Box, something like that. So do you, you have that wrapped up? Do you have a regular one that you... Yeah, we have regular paperbacks, too, but this was a hardcover that I ordered for myself, because they made it in hardcover. So this is my copy to stay on my shelf. That's nice. Yeah, it's just a good... I mean, anyone can order that. It's just nice to have. That's my stack of scripts over there. Just piles and piles of scripts. That's how I go. Do you... I see Steve, keep, you're one of those people that keep sticky notes on their computer. Honest to God, most of the sticky notes are from my Kojiko problems. So they all have employee numbers on them. A lot of good that does, eh? You know there's a sticky note application. Yeah, I know that. <laughs> but I... Whatever. I don't mind sticky notes as long as they're not in my way and on the bottom of the screen. Although at night when I'm editing, I keep thinking there's a bug on yeah, like my it. screen because the Apple symbol is yeah, now... just got the stem. Just a stem, and I think it's a bug, and then it startles me. And I'm like, it's just a stem. I'm like, I should move it, and then I never do. And It's right in front of you. Do you think Apple's going to do without the bezels one day? Just yes. Get rid of the bottom? Yeah. That's one of the things that I've found it standing out and kind of odd on their computers. It could just be a screen, right? It gives it some character. It does. Don't you need something to hold the screen up? Well, the st- I mean, the stand's fine, but I mean, like, the bottom. The bezel. The, being... the bezel. Clearly, I have no clue what you're talking about. <laughs> This part. Oh, that thing. And when you turn it on, there's still a, a bezel around the outside too. Bezel around. Um, like most phone, most newer phones nowadays are going edge to edge. There's right. no, there's no even top or bottom. This one has. I don't. Yeah, you probably get. Curious. Oh yeah, I guess. So you get too. quite a bit at the top and the bottom. Yeah. Display technology is rapidly yes improving. And it's so weird, too, like, the technology that they put into phones is, like, entirely different than what goes into TVs and entirely different than what's in computer monitors. It's sort of just a race for the best one. But that's eh, what we look at all day long. Yeah. So it better look good. Yeah. Uh, so, Fright... What was it? Fright Mirror in the Falls. Did, what are the dates? October 26th, 27th. Okay. October 26th, 27th, Fright Mirror, Scotiabank, Convention Center, in the Falls. How much are tickets? That I don't know. I think they're twenty five bucks, but I'm not sure. What's okay? So you're, I mean, it's, you're there. What's the other draw? I mean, uh, who else the, is the there? The original screen, screen queen. Do you know who that is? No. Not I ones? do. Screen queen. Adrian. Yeah. The. 
I always want to say Barbosa because of Pirates of the Caribbean, uh, and that's not right. I can't remember her name. Um, it starts, it, it, it's Barb something. We have technology. To yeah, yes. you're just talking about determine it. Determine this last name. Yes. Um, the guy who played Pinhead in Hellraiser will be there, which, as a reader, is a Clive, Bar- Clive Barker. Big fan of. Just read his new one. That was awesome. Um, there's graphic artists, there's special effects people. <laughs> special effects makeup, they should do face painting or something, that'd be fun. They might. No, they just, like, that's, this, the more you sound, I couldn't find who we were looking for, so we're just going to move on and pretend that didn't exist. Um, the more you talk about it, the more it is really just a Comic-Con for horror. It is, yeah. And it's weird who ends up going to even the regular Comic-Cons, because you'll find out, oh... Well, it's the person that did the makeup for Michael Myers in Halloween 7. Okay. Yeah. You know Gremlins, right? Yeah. It's like, so the guy who played the main character in Gremlins, which yeah. I can't remember what his name was, he's going to be there. And hmm. I'm like, oh my God, like, what is he, in his 60s? Yeah, at that point, you're just kind of milking. Though that's sad, because you would assume that uh, Comic-Con would be a I'm bigger... A bigger draw, and when you can't get to Comic Con, I guess you do fright mares. Fright there's fest. so, but there's so many little conventions everywhere that you mean, and, and there's always going to be a list of celebrities yeah. that are Zach that are willing Galligan. to do it. And Zach I mean, Galligan. in the states, right? They're like huge. So yeah. for something in Canada, you're not going to get as much. I forgot that Howie Mandel played the Star Gremlin. Huh? He did. Yeah, he did the voice. I never knew that. Look at that. My dad is slow. Time to update. To a new phone, so you can play the app that's based on your book. <laughs> anyway, it's gonna be a lot of fun. I'm gonna be dressed up, so like a horror person, you should do like an Elvira thing. No, 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 because I'm gonna have to be sitting there all day for like eight or nine hours. It's gotta be, be comfortable. Comfortable, yeah. And then move around. How many books are you taking with you? What's your goal? All of them. All of them. How much is all of them? <laughs> Like, um, what's your stock? I went and got Do you have a the, garage filled with books? I went and got the, um, you know, card reader so I can the take square. the cards. I got the square. I so took the last one from BD so you can get it. I bought it. I got, I got one for free. Yeah, because that's what I... You get them I, for free, yeah. You can get yeah. them for if free. you sign up, you get it for free. Yeah. But if you lose yours, like no, I did in I my ordered, move, you pay $10 and get a $6 rebate. I ordered the, um, the actual tab, too. Oh, good. So I'm going to have to have my tablet there because my phone's too old. It won't accept it. <laughs> So, yeah, people can pay me. No, that's, that's good. Awesome. Yeah, so I have all my inventory in there, too, because it keeps track of your inventory. So I have, like, 30 copies of Kept, 30 copies of The Sumerians, I think 20 of Sudden Death, I think 30 of Cataclysm. I'm going to have two of these, because one's for sale. This one I don't have, A World Unimagined, because this is another um, multi-author book that was produced by someone else. So they actually cost me more money to order, so people can just get them on Amazon, and it's an ebook if they want, because it's less money. And then the new book that I wrote, I will have those, because they'll be ready for the show. You know what you should do? You should, um, with your promotional material, be it a bookmark or something, since now your book that you wanted done for the, for the convention, you mm-hmm. should write a, another short story, like a horror short story. Maybe, maybe base it around a horror convention or something and put a link on the bookmark for them to download for free as a gift for going to the comic con that'd be a small incentive to get people to go i mean you could you could uh well i am gonna have a box there for people to sign box. up uh to win a copy of either one of my audios so i'll have two different well that's ones. good yeah i'll have two different boxes so you can pick which one you want or both if you want because one science fiction one's horror so it gives you an option um, so that, you know, someone can win an audible book for all that. On that note, I think yeah, if you're in the area, you should check out the convention. And I think that we should also be wrapping up because we should be, we mentioned before we want to be mindful to who the heck actually has time to listen to all this. Cause yeah. we okay. might hit the two hour mark if we keep going and who knows how long it's going to go from there. <laughs> so, That's okay. It was fun. It's always riveting with somebody yeah, else. It's been a, it's been a good podcast. <sighs> <laughs> 
did you have fun? Any other things? Any any other things to say to the camera before we say goodbye, Dolly? I have no clue. No? <laughs> have you, a good night, everybody. See you later. This was Teresa Jacobs. Info down here.